we've all heard of restaurant horror stories, right? You know, someone's messed with the food or they messed up in a bout of food poisoning or they don't clean and how gross it is and all that stuff. Well, I do have one basic story to show you that sometimes people just don't care in a restaurant and another one to show you what was probably be the most outrageous, phenomenally upsetting thing you have ever heard about a restaurant. And it's 100% fact and true. Let me get on with the first story here, because this is the thing. It's just a basic thing that happens, and it's quite a common incident that happens in restaurants. Now, I had not applied to work at this place. A friend of mine had. He actually went to culinary school. He was all about restaurants and cooking and chef and all that nonsense. I had no interest in it at the time. Now, we're talking about going back to 1994. Now, he had got hired. He interviewed with two of the chefs at this place, and they had decided to hire him. And they told the third guy, because they weren't going to be around for a couple days, that they were hiring him. And in order to tell him exactly who he was, because he couldn't, he had never met him yet. He said, you know, the two guys that come in every day for coffee at exactly three o'clock, it's there. It's them at that table. But they never pointed out and described us exactly. Now, that would have been easy to do considering I'm six foot four and my buddy is five foot three. So anyway, we go in, I go in, correction, I go in the next day. He wasn't there. The chef comes out. He comes up to me, starts talking about the restaurant and the kitchen and the, and the position. And he says, we've decided to hire you if you still want the job. And I said, yeah, hell yeah, I'll take it. So I took it. Now, let me tell you, anybody that hasn't been in a kitchen or anything like that, it's clearly a job. But within 30 seconds, they know that if you bullshit it or not. So they were aware, but they didn't get rid of me. They let me stay on. They taught me a lot. And that's how I ended up getting into the restaurant business back then. So anyway, with the incident I saw, it was sitting there and it was time. It was time for my meal. And of course, the cooks and the chefs, we always ate free. We always ate free. And what we had done this time was we were sitting there and I was sitting there wanting to eat. And he's there like they were going to cook. They wouldn't let me near the grill yet or anything. He grabs the burger patty out of where the drawer on the cold table where we kept the burgers. Throws it towards the grill from six feet away. It hits the grill, slides all the way over and off the grill and into the garbage can. But he walks over, he picks it up literally and just slaps it across his apron and throws it back on the grill. And that is, that's my freaking lunch. And that was just a basic incident. That happens in restaurants all over all the time. And if anybody says it never happens, they are lying to you. If they're saying they've never cut a corner, they are lying to you. It's just a fact. Anyway, that was just the one basic story. Little filler story here, just kind of an honorable mention on things. When you think things get bad, I've seen a restaurant when it was super, super busy and we were working and I caught the other guy plating the food. We called him an expo because they were, you know, getting the food ready out the window. I caught him plating the food and we were so busy, the dishwashers could not keep up and we were behind. And I saw him reach down into our bus tub of dirty plates, pull one out and just give it a basic wipe with a cloth. And then started plating the food. Now, this one I had caught beforehand and I reached up and grabbed it and I fired it into the trash plate and all broke the plate. Got in trouble for that later, but had to remake the whole thing. And I caught him on it and picked him off the line. He had to learn a few basics on how to operate things all over again. These type of things are common occurrences. Nobody believes it. I mean, if there are any of you out there that have say, uh, seen the movie Waiting with Ryan Reynolds and Justin Long and that. People will sit there and go, oh, that seems kind of bad. I, a place could never be like that. That is mild. That's not even 10% of what happens in a restaurant that people don't know about what goes on behind the scenes. So let me get to what I call the greatest restaurant horror story you will ever hear. This is something I witnessed. This is with a young cook that I was training and a brand new new hire that had only been there a couple days. Now, are you ready for this? You think you can handle this? Here it comes. Okay. We were busy. We were quite busy and it was a little rough to do and we're getting behind and we're going. And the one thing you got to teach people when you're cooking and they don't understand is you got to have knife skills. A lot of people do not have knife skills. And if you've been in the kitchen, you'll understand, but uh, people get cut all the time. And I mean, and we had a saying when it comes that a sharp knife doesn't cut because a sharp knife doesn't slip. So you don't cut yourself. That's what that saying is for. Now, when we get to it, we sat there and we always sharpen the knives beforehand get everything ready and we're quite we're quite busy as a busy dinner rush and all the one cook was doing at the time was dicing up some bacon it was to go on baked potato and various other things that to put some bacon on some bacon bits on a salad we made our own 
and he was dicing it up and he was getting ready to put it all for an order to go out and he was dicing at the last minute and he missed and he took the end of his finger off right through the nail and the end of his finger off and this was sitting there and there was blood all over the place and i and i grabbed him and i got him offline and you had to get his hand and do first aid and prep it and get someone else to come look after him and while i'm hauling him offline now this is the cook that i've been training for a couple months i told the new guy clean that whole area up we got to get that out of there and i get him around the corner and i thought to myself i better tell him that everything that's on that table now in front there goes in the trash and we start over there's been an incident so i turn around the holler at him and i see the food's gone the bacon and all that stuff is gone and he's starting to clean up the blood and i run and i said well, what'd you do with it and he's like i finished the order and i put it up waitress took it are you kidding me there was a tip of a guy's finger in that bacon that went out in that food and i look and i see the waitress and it's already at the table i can't run out there and go excuse me sir i need that back there's a tip of a finger in there there's a piece of someone's finger in your food. You can't go back and do that and get that back. And I'm like, son of a bitch, what do I do? I, I can't say anything. I didn't tell anybody. But I went into the office to my manager. And I said, we have a serious problem. This guy notices. And he's like, what? And I said, you seen, you know, I'll say Eric in the meantime, cut his finger. I said, yeah. He said, yeah. I said, well, he took the tip right off, just a little piece off. Boom. It was in the bacon that was there that the new guy, on the plate because he, he thought he was doing a good thing and finishing up the order and get it out because all i had to do was finish topping off the potato and oh man he's like what and i said what am i doing i can't go out there and he's just like well we just got to hope that nobody notices and nobody says anything and it doesn't come back and where we're really worried was a piece of his nail went off too and if that went in there then they'd probably notice however we got lucky the whole night went by the people they ate they left it was the whole and we're like oh we couldn't handle it because the company I worked for at that time, the parent company had already been sued twice in the last couple of years to a tune of over $300 million. If that'll give you kind of any indication, if you want to look back around that time frame as to uh, what company that might have been. Anyway, I will say we were very lucky and it didn't happen and there were no complaints and we got away with it. But that is absolutely the worst, most disturbing thing I had ever seen in a restaurant or ever even heard of at a restaurant. I mean, you've heard outrageous other stuff before, but I don't buy it. Even when they did that show where they spied on it and they said they caught that guy that was stirring drinks with his penis in the bar or the person that was urinating in the coffee. I don't buy that. I believe that was set up for the show because there would have been criminal charges and people gone to jail and all that stuff if they had caught that stuff on camera. But this here, it, it happened. And I, I've seen other stuff where people have had a wicked injury. You know, I'm going to add another story to this. this. This is a funny one, okay? If you've ever cooked, if you ever listen to this and you have ever worked in a restaurant, in a kitchen, even the waitress, you might understand the frustration you eventually have with a customer that puts you over the line. You just can't handle it. Now, this particular restaurant, I was working the breakfast. And we had this particular customer come in. It was always very, very peculiar, particular and very, very anal and always sending crap back. So I always specifically made their food and it was always good. But this time they sent it back and complained. So I redid it. They sent it back again. They were always trying to get that free meal and they sent it back again. So I redid it again. Now this is the fourth time I redone their food and they sent it back and there was no reason to complain any time. Well, you know, we're just trying to play nice with the customer and really it's only costing us a couple bucks to not cause an issue. Well, I had had it. I'd finally had enough. And we had containers for people if they didn't have eat all their food, right? They could pack it up and take their leftovers with them. So I grabbed one of our containers and I sat there and I took two eggs on crack to put it in the container. I took some raw bacon and put it in there. I took untoasted bread and put it in there. And I grabbed our uncooked hash browns and I put it in there and I walked out to her table and I slammed it down in front of her and I said, you go home and make it your effing self. And she got mad, started hollering at me. She's going to get me fired. You can't talk to a customer that way. All the standard stuff that you hear in a restaurant when you finally give a customer back the crap that they're throwing at you. 
anyway, I sat there and you can go right ahead. You can go talk to my manager. And I pointed and I said, you see the big guy over there almost falling over, laughing over this? That's my manager. You can go complain to him. Thank you. Have a nice day. Anyway, that is a couple basic restaurant stories. I could tell you more. Oh man, I could tell restaurant stories, hitchhiking stories, you name it. Now, I think I'm going to start adding some to this as well. Fill in some more video time with some stories from when I worked in the restaurant, some stories from when I was hitchhiking, and some stories when I was working construction. So anyway, we will sit there and I will say adios, goodbye, so long, be safe, and until next time, peace out everyone.